Hello everyone and welcome to my Young and Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. After his trip, Adam gets home and admires a framed picture of Connor. The door is knocked on. There's Sally carrying muffins and coffee. She gives him a hug. He informs Sally that the physicians are still working to determine which drugs would be best for Connor. You have to try and fail. This sounds dangerous to Sally. According to Adam, it can take months before they find out if they are effective. His current medications are interfering with his sleep in the meanwhile. They never had the chance to see him. They were unable to take the chance primarily because Connor began punishing himself. In a physical sense, he began striking his legs. Adam feels helpless. He is reassured by Sally that he and Chelsea are making every effort. The specialists must be trusted. Adam fears that his son might turn back. Sally begs him to make an effort to be upbeat. Adam worries that Connor's situation will only worsen. He feels bad that they have to cover his attendance costs. He believes he is damaged. Billy walks into Lily's office, looking for her, and texts her to arrange a meeting. He needs to talk to her right away about something. Things are so much worse for Connor than we thought, sobs Chelsea as she enters. Billy cradles her. She informs him that Connor is suffering from severe OCD and isn't getting any sleep. She sobs that they are unable to even hug or share a room with him. Billy believes it will need some time. Chelsea claims that Adam and her are contributing to the issue. She informs Billy that Connor has bruises on his thighs from punching himself, according to the doctor's report. He is in excruciating discomfort. When will it come to an end? Will this pain last the remainder of my son's life? Nate, Lily, and Devin talk about how angry Mamie was when she left the office at Society. Nate believes she felt singled out. Devin claims that she caused it on her own. Lily questions whether she'll get into more problems. Nate assumes that she will. As Devin states that they should be concerned about internal threats within the organization, Lily reads Billy's SMS. Nate is confident that Mamie won't take any action against them since, even in the event that she chose to, she lacks the authority to destabilize the company. They discuss her visit to the city and attempt to dictate what happens. Devin muses that he too thinks Billy has to leave the company. Lily doesn't believe that Billy should be fired. Devin wonders if she really is loyal to him. Jill will interpret it as an assault on Lily, Lily clarifies. Why does Devin perceive him as a threat all the time? Consider how he can assist us. Devin said the man simply wants more authority and influence within the organization. Lily needs to see him immediately. Devin and Nate observe that they weren't invited. That sounds like divide and conquer to me, Devin sniffs. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's not good. As Phyllis enters the GCAC, she sees Cricket seated at a table. Shouldn't you be working on your super important case? She asks as she approaches. Shouldn't you be minding your own business? Christine responds. As Phyllis jabs at them, they argue vocally. You didn't really want Danny, did you? You merely wanted to confirm that I hadn't picked him up. Chris claims that she is blabbering on about topics about which she is ignorant. Danny enters and gives Christine a kiss. They casually discuss how he's getting on the road today. Phyllis will allow them to bid each other farewell. Chris is asked by Danny. You didn't tell her. I declined the case. Cricket grinned at Phyllis. After all, I'm going with Danny. Phyllis believes Christine must have been ditched by the clients. Danny hopes to end his tour with a bang. He has noticed Phyllis's transformation. She is ecstatic to meet him. Danny would like to take that Phyllis with him when he goes on tour. He says that he and the bug had discussed their goals and passions for a long time. Our night was about so much more than just talking, purrs Chris. Chelsea says they'll have to check Connor into an inpatient facility at Chancellor Winters if he continues to harm himself. That's what they do when they hurt themselves. 
Billy informs her that a treatment plan is in place. I hope it turns out. Chelsea is still in a panic. He might find himself more afraid and alone. Billy queries if they've offered them any cause for optimism. According to Chelsea, they're reaching the source of his trauma. He doesn't think highly of himself. As Lily enters, she realizes she is interrupting and apologizes. Billy's workday is interrupted, and Chelsea is sorry for that. Her mission is to reach Marchetti. Lily sends Connor her warmest wishes. After saying thank you, Chelsea walks away. Chelsea shows up at that exact moment. She enters and tells him she can't handle her work. Sally claims to have just departed. I sincerely apologize for Connor's suffering. You two are performing fantastically. She is confident they can help Connor get through this. After kissing Adam, she leaves. Chelsea sobs, I'm a mess, to Adam. Adam is aware of how you feel. She expresses regret for barging in. He is happy she came. Adam and Chelsea both concur that the pep talks are agonizing. All they want to do is shout. Adam detests both the fact that he constantly dumping on Sally and the encouraging remarks as they come out as false. I'm to blame, not her. Chelsea claims that recently, all she does is cry on Billy. Adam comes to the conclusion that only they truly understand their situation. They must communicate with one another. If he holds her responsible for any of this, Chelsea wants to know. Adam advises Chelsea that they should stop berating themselves because this is already quite taxing. He promptly says he's sorry for saying that. It used to just be a figure of speech, Chelsea mumbles. She sobs as she describes how Connor actually beats himself up. His tiny hands. His tiny hands. How could he be injuring himself with those hands? How come this isn't our fault? Adam assures her that placing the blame elsewhere won't lead them to a solution. Nate and Devon wonder what Billy is up to at society. Devon wouldn't rule out trying anything. Nate questions whether Mamie is correct and whether their thinking has become paranoid. Devon queries whether his cousin believes that being distrustful of Billy is paranoid. Nate notes that he has had misgivings about Billy, Mamie, and Lily. You devote a great deal of time to creating conspiracies concerning internal dangers. In his opinion, better use of the energy would be to construct bridges. Devin acknowledges that he may be perceiving unreal threats. However, he's curious about the nature of the bomb Billy is going to drop. He advises that they go hear it out. Billy tells Lily in her office that he feels like he owes her something and wants to tell her before anyone else. Lily assumes she won't enjoy this. Billy expresses his wish that she does since they will have to accept it. Jill has taken a significant choice. She has made the decision to stand back and has given me complete decision-making authority. Lily is in complete shock. I'm taken aback. She had no idea that Jill was considering something along these lines. Billy asserts that he was equally taken aback. Wow, said Lily. That's it? She is no longer there. Billy promises to keep her on the board. It's time for him to shine, she said. Lily bursts into laughter. There's a serious suspicion here. If she believes he would make this up, Billy asks. Lily finds it incomprehensible that Jill chose not to tell Devon and her directly. This reminds me a lot of Mamie's visit to the town, complete with all of her tricks and secrets. It wasn't to my taste then, and it's not to my taste now either. Chloe and Sally meet at Crimson Lights. She is confronted by Chloe for using her personal account to pay their business bills after she is noticed to be late. Sally is attempting to buy them some time so they can figure something out. Although Chloe is touched, that is a significant sacrifice. That has to be a loan, she maintains. Sally's discovery with it. She questions how they secure funding to keep their business afloat. Chloe finds it hard to admit, but perhaps Adam's suggestion, joining Newman Enterprises, is their best and last chance. Sally gives a headshake. Victor destroyed it with a shot. Chloe believes they must figure out how to persuade Victor to reconsider. We enlist Adam, she says hesitantly. 
Sally says, no way, no way. He is currently going through the worst. Chloe is aware of Connor because to Chelsea. She advises Sally to ask Nick to advocate on their behalf. Maybe this was a mistake, ponders Sally. Chloe ogles. Is she advocating for them to give up, that their collaboration has ended? Sally explains that turning away from fashion was a mistake. Chloe asks how much money she wants to use if she wants to go back to that again. They need to act quickly, even if Sally does not yet have all the answers. On our own, we can dig ourselves out of this hole. Do you accompany me? Chloe responds, 100%. We will require really large shovels. Christine tells Phyllis in the GCAC dining room that she had never been more definite about going with Danny after their seismic night together. She'll be a groupie, Phyllis worries. She believes she's attempting to prevent her from attending Danny's funeral. Chris claims that she is unrelated to this. This is about us rediscovering our love. It seems like I've lost my appetite, Phyllis mocks. Danny advises her to be careful. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.